I picked up the phone and he said, Robin, I'm at the hospital with Ted and we need you to get here. It's humbling more than anything to be vulnerable when, you, when you're when you raised to, hey, don't show weakness, you know, just as men in our society. Don't show weakness, don't show emotion. Ted had what they believe was a mini stroke while he was at work. You feel like Superman, you feel invincible. When you're taken way down, once again humbled, and you have no control over the, the situation, and you say, okay, here's where I am. I'm vulnerable right now. This is how we do it, do it. This is how a kingdom comes. This is how we get it done. This is how we do it, do it. This is how a kingdom comes. This is how we do it, do it. Hey guys, welcome to sunny Los Angeles, California, home to some beautiful mountains, gorgeous beaches, and my good buddy, Ted Rath. Ted is the head strength coach for the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, him and I got into the business about the same time. He was a young assistant with the Detroit Lions. I was a young assistant with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and we shared a lot of the same goals, a lot of the same mentors and, and philosophy and those types of things. And so super excited to come hang out with him his staff his family and uh, spend a little time watching him work so sit back and enjoy this episode of beyond the chalk there he <laughs> what's is what's up man what's up brother good to see how you brother man. good to see you been? good congrats on the great start man. appreciate it man appreciate it how you doing good to see you how's lax <laughs> never <laughs> never adventure. chaotic huh an adventure always <laughs> this is awesome man this uh, beats, the, beats the real world. I was going to huh? say, a little bit better than Michigan. Weather, Not a bad view. Yeah, a l- little less than Allen Park. We got mountains. <laughs> we got Malibu 30 minutes away. It's not too shabby. Good, yeah, man. I'm excited to watch you work. I oh, appreciate it, man. I'm excited. Well, show me around. Let's, Let's go. go. See it. Yeah. Let's go. That's right, I'm coming back like OJ, like a running back in his old days. Still rocking those OJs. My paychecks get a little bigger, but that don't change me or made me richer. All right, so this is it. Kind of the home away from home. We got about approximately 6,500 square feet, so not a tiny space. It's great for NFL. For NFL, it's yeah. good size, to be honest. And, and the flow is a big open room. I wouldn't ask for anything else. It's not choppy. It is what it is. It's an open space, and that's perfect. That's all we need. We have Nord boards here. We'll, we'll utilize the groin bar for specific things, specific positions. We have multiple force plates. We have one in here and then we have one in the athletic training room. One of my favorite aspects of this room is literally the the double door that you see going into the athletic training room. So how we have set this up is incredibly collaborative. We want not just the strength and conditioning, but the sports performance staff as a whole to be on the same page, ticking constantly. We have woodway treadmills. We have everything else that we can need just from an unloaded standpoint. We walk past the Versa climbers. A lot of our off-season conditioning programmed around that, deloading the guys joint-wise, but some of our big guys, we can still get really good work. Exactly. Deload them and go from there. Down here is really the main area. I mean, when you look at it, we do have eight, eight racks. We can work off both sides. So when we set up everything we came in we made sure that we had in inlaid flooring so that we could utilize the best of the space like we talked about this is a smaller condensed area but nfl wise it's not bad size but then when you get 50 60 athletes nfl size athletes and here it shrinks fast as right. you know so programming a lot programming wise we knew we wanted to lay everything out so it was super efficient we could flow so everything being in the middle where we said okay we can do three different sections of work right here with the athlete really not having to move too far from the platform or from the rack so we try to set it up knowing that and then build everything else around programming so that we could be efficient with the space but also with the time that we're allotted Feet through, open up the hips, good pace, good pace. Here we go, bringing it back, feels right. Kind of combined strength and conditioning and football. Strength and conditioning is what led me to playing football in high school and seeing the benefits of where I met my wife was on a football field. The home that we afford is because strength and conditioning has allowed me to have a career in this profession. And not only that, but be able to impact athletes and other coaches, fellow coaches that you get to work with. Also being able to be around some of the players where I'll have a lifelong relationship.
relationships with and having my wife know their wives and our children know their children and being able to grow up together and those things are far reaching to where you can't even quantify how much that means to me because it's impacting my family in a positive way so in long story short it means everything Whoa, super dizzy. Yeah. Oh, super dizzy. He's just great. He's my best friend. He's my rock. I've we started dating when I was 15, and he knows me better than anyone else. And I feel that I think that I know him better than anyone else as well. And I can't imagine my life without you. Probably the same way, Ron. But technology. Yeah. yeah. We can Facetime. Yeah. So I can Facetime her and the kids, and that makes my life tick yeah. if I'm if I'm gone for a week-long trip or I'm at the combine or we're somewhere across the world and I'm like man I just want to mm -hmm. see my children FaceTime you're one dial away so for me that's been great I don't have a single soul on the West Coast that I know my closest relative is 2,000 miles away I think the other wives on staff they truly are my tribe we have such a strong relationship and yeah. such a strong bond and it's such a young staff um, and we all have kids around the same age so if something does happen, it's one of those ladies that I'm calling. Yeah. And I, I do rely on them. They're our emergency contact yeah. at school. If something happens, they're the ones who's coming. Um, when Ted did have his health scare back in the spring, it was the other wives that I called and they were here within 30 minutes to help out with the kids. I think, you know, once again, looking at the family and looking at the other things, the people that depend on me every day when I go home, seeing them, that's, that's all the motivation I need. My goal in life is to have three Super Bowl rings so I can pass one down to each of my children, you know, and I've, I've said that and I told Brooklyn that, my oldest, and she said, what about mom? Like, kid, do you understand how <laughs> difficult it is to get four? All right, but I love it. So now she's increasing me, she's pushing me to be better. It's seeing those guys come around and they say, I appreciate you bringing your energy because that helps me bring the energy. When you were talking about a Monday in season, it's December, January, and they feel like crap. They're sore, they're beat up, they're banged up, and I'm asking them to do even more uncomfortable things to prepare their body for the next competition. If I don't have energy, how do I expect them to have energy? So having that compliment of you always bring it with the passion, with the enthusiasm, that's one of the greatest compliments I can have. For today, jumps, skills and mids, power block, mids in here, skills over on the athletic training side, Nord board, critical information. If you guys feel good, let's knock that out. Other than that, now work the charge today. Let's go get better, baby, let's go. The truest measurement of performance is consistency. So if I can consistently be at that same level each and every day, then I know that eventually that's gonna to lead to success. When I look at things, I wanna make sure that I'm giving them, number one, the real me. So if it's, a, if it's a situation we're going into a certain game and maybe I didn't do a great job, I programmed poorly and I had our skill position players do a hamstring exercise that they shouldn't have, I think first and foremost, I gotta be willing to take that ownership. So I think one of the, the four most important words you can say as a leader is, I screwed that up. So being willing to stand up there and say, guys, I really messed that up. This is 100% on me. I need to communicate better. I need to do a better job, and I will. I'll get this fixed, and I'll do a better job for you. Ted had what they believe was a mini stroke while he was at work. I feel like Superman. You feel invincible, and you know that. It's when you can't control what's going on, you have no idea. I knew everything that was going on, and I just couldn't verbalize it. I couldn't speak to it. So that, to me, was, I knew she was gonna be more worried, so I was more concerned with how she was. I'm sitting there, and I know everything that's going on. I know every every question the doctor's asking me, and I'm trying to answer. He says, right. what's that on your wrist? I'm trying to say, watch, I can't. I say, g g g g I, <laughs> I got nothing, I can't say anything. Being removed from having control, that's one of those really mm -hmm. frustrating things. So for me, you know, it, it was eye-opening because I live a very healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I have zero risk factors for anything. So the, th the one thing I took away from it is there's no bias when you're talking about health issues. Mm -hmm. There's no, uh, health issues don't discriminate based on age, based on health status, based on anything. And I've refocused a little bit, but honestly, for me, it's been eye-opening in the fact that when people are going through things, it maybe you relate to them a little bit better. And hopefully mm -hmm. that helps me help someone else who's going through a tough time somewhere down the line where I can say, hey man, it's gonna be okay. Don't worry, don't yeah. think twice. You have no reason to stress out about anything. It's gonna be okay. If you need help, we're here for you. We've been through something similar and we're here to get you through it. 
What an awesome day, man. Thanks for coming, Appreciate bro. Everything, Appreciate everything, brother. Man. Thanks so much. Yeah, always. Anytime. Yeah, we've, we've known each other a long time, man. It's been just awesome to see how you've maintained, you know, keeping your your faith, your family, your passion. Appreciate it. Uh, all the success you had. So I'm fired up for you, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, brother. Appreciate see you, man. You, bro. Yep. Stay Take care. care. Right. Take care. Uh, here's a guy that, that has maintained throughout his entire career uh, keeping faith and family and football in the right order and um, does an excellent job, has been successful everywhere he's ever been, uh, but you know, ultimately uh, is going to have uh, big wins in his life with his family, with his faith. And um, so excited to hang out with him for the last day or so and uh, you know, just see him work and the impact that he's making on a daily basis. So if you love these episodes, please like, share, comment. Just continue to help us highlight the great people like Ted Rath we have in this profession. And make sure you check back next time for the next episode of Beyond the Chalk. When you're able to truly look at yourself critically in a mirror and say, I didn't do a good enough job, it's one of the hardest things to do in life. But when you can finally do it, then you can effectively create change. So if I can do that and be honest with myself and say, I didn't do good enough, I need to do better. Now I'm going to have the passion and everything on my backside because I know I've screwed up. Now I'm going to get that change for the better. So I think always being willing to admit your mistakes and then taking that step-by-step -step approach to make sure that those current actions are matching up with your future goals on a daily basis.